Coach Dable, good afternoon, Wookie Hawkins, World Full Sports and Eddie. How you doing? Hey, Mook. Good. How are you? Excellent, excellent game yesterday, Coach. Steph got one with his first 100-yard performance. Uh, the run game was able to produce over 200 yards on the ground. Josh was efficient at, you know, 70% completion. Uh, just talk about the way your offense was uh, able to dominate with balance out there yesterday, Coach. Yeah, I think that's directly related to the team. Um, you know, our guys work hard. We're just trying to improve every week. There's certainly plays that we left out there um, that we could get better at, um, and we need to get better at it. So, again, early in the season, um, our guys are a group of guys that work really hard. They, they practice well. They prepare well. And, you know, you hope that translates to the game. Um, you know, a lot of times it does, and sometimes it doesn't. Um, but I give credit to the players for going out there and, and executing. Yes, and uh, a lot of variety in the run game yesterday. How did uh, Spencer Brown fit in that variety, and how much will you emphasize being consistent in the run game, knowing that Kansas City has given up, you know, pretty much at the bottom 146 on the ground? Yeah, well, again, you know, it's a week-to-week -week league. Um, so you go back and you, you watch the teams that they played, obviously uh, just getting started on them, but they played some, some teams that, that run the ball. Uh, Cleveland and, and Baltimore and um, look this is a, a good team uh, with good players and good coaches uh, like it is every week in this league and um, you know we're, we're starting you start back over uh, you put this one to bed win or lose and you go through the things that you need to go through and try to correct the things you can correct and you know improve on the things you can improve and and then you get started again you know right about now so that's kind of where we're at in the week. Spencer Brown, I uh, care to talk about how he fit in that run game yesterday. Yeah, I think all those guys. I mean, look, the offensive line, you got to have five guys trying to work as one. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that, that Spencer did well for us, uh, just like all the other guys. And, you know, there's, there's things we got to clean up. Um, you know, it was his, his first game, really starting and finishing a game. And um, Really like the way Spencer plays, his play style, his approach during the week as a young player, and a lot of room for growth. Yes, sir. Appreciate your time. Good luck this week, Coach. Thanks, Moop. Appreciate you. Hey, Dave. It's good to see you. Hi, Heather. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Kind of, kind of going off of that with the offensive line, we saw you know some different combinations of guys, obviously, with Spencer out there, Daryl moving inside. Um, you know, Cody not starting in this game. Do you anticipate those five to be out there this week? Or is it something that, you know, you're still kind of working through when it comes to the combination of your starting five there? Yeah, no, I think you guys asked Sean this right before I got in here. And, um, you know, we're just going to gonna grind it out here with the guys we got and, and try to get better. And, um you know, you're always you're always evaluating, regardless if it's the the five guys you're going with or the receivers. You're always evaluating every week to see how you can improve. Um, those five guys, you know, they did a good job. We got still got you know a lot of things to clean up. And then, what have you seen from Dawson so far this season? Um, it just seems like his. You know, he talked about his confidence being up, and um, you know, just being just just playing with with that edge there I guess what have you seen from him so far this season yeah he's been a he's been a guy that's improved since he's he's been here um he cares about it a lot he puts a lot of time and effort and and energy into preparing and and practicing and uh he he's a great great young man that you know gives everything he has he has since he's gotten here and you know he's improved I'd say every single day he's been here um because he's got the right mindset. He's got some toughness, he's intelligence. Um, he works on, I works on his craft. And, uh, you know, I, we've been talking about him since summer, I guess, um, you know, he just, he just makes it one day at a time and, and keeps getting better uh, for us. And said this in the summer, I'll say now I have a lot of confidence in, in where he's at and, um, you know, hopefully we'll just keep growing on it. Thanks Dave, appreciate it. You got it, Heather, have a good day. Hey, Brian, John Warrow. Sorry, I don't have my um, thing on okay, my bud. video on. Um, to, go, to, to, to go off bad on. Hair, on, on yeah, it, yeah, I've got a lot of it's a bad face day, bad whatever. Yeah. So okay. um, speaking of Dawson Knox, did we 
how much do you think people might have underestimated the transition that Dawson had to make from switching, you know, from moving to tight end um, and, and, and learning all the responsibilities, you know, and, and are we seeing, you know, him starting to blossom in that sense, maybe the light coming on in some ways, you know, this year right now? That's a good question. It's a, it's a hard position to, to play. Um, regardless of the league that you're playing in, but certainly in, in the National Football League. And, you know, when his story is well documented from a walk on to the quarterback to all these type of things to playing in a little bit of a different system. Um, you know, just like a lot of college kids that, that come out, get drafted or are free agents, there's a, I'd say there's a learning curve in, in probably every position. Um, but really this position is, you know, having coached it here for, for a while here before I came here, it's, it's, there's so many things um, that entail the responsibilities of a, of a tight end. Um, and a lot of times those guys get, you know, get, they get pulled in different directions. All right, we're going to meet with the run game. Then we're going to meet with the pass game. You're getting less and less individual time. And, you know, first and foremost, I give credit to Dawson to just grinding it out, um, you know, he's almost here like a quarterback, how much he's here. He's, he's meeting with Rob. Um, he spent an extra time individual. And again, we've talked about this before. You're going to have some hardships when you come into this league, you're going to have them when you're a 10 year vet or a 20 year, whatever it may be. Uh, this is not an easy, it's not an easy profession to be consistent on a week to week basis. There's a lot of things that go into it. Um, and he's certainly done, you know, his share to, to try to put him in the best possible position he can put himself into with the, you know, understanding that we still got, you know, we still got a lot of stuff to, to clean up and be better at, um, you know, but he's made, he's made significant progress and I know he'd like to make more progress, but um, I think he has our trust and I know he's got the quarterback's trust and, you know, we'll just take it each day. He's, he's doing, you know, better and better. And, 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 you know, as, as gradual improvement goes with a player, you, you know, we don't see, we don't see really the significant leaps and jumps. Did you, is there a moment or a point where you saw Dawson, you know, really come onto the scene? Like, where you are going, okay, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe this is, you know, he's got it this time. He's, he, he's really getting it. Yeah, I've never really lacked confidence in, in him just because of his approach. Like, look, every play is not going to be perfect. Uh, he's, he's a consistent, consistent guy in terms of his preparation, his practice habits. Um, he's coachable. He's, you know, he's, he's just each that's, – that's what you hope for for young guys that, that come into the league is they just keep on making strides, you know, whether it's from, from practice to practice, game to game, or season to season. And, you know, I think that – you know, he's done that for us. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, War. Hey, Brian. Sal, good afternoon. Hey, Sal. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders, 34 years old, has a Achilles injury less than three calendar years ago. I mean, what separates and, and what he's doing now? I mean, what separates guys like that at that age to continue to play at that level on, on a consistent basis? Yeah, it's hard to do. Right. It's, it's hard to, to stay in this league as long as he stayed in this league as a player and you know, continually perform. Um, you know, first, it's a credit to the to the young man of of his approach, the things he does to take care of his body. Um, he is a tireless worker. You know, he's one of those guys that even at 34, you got to try to pull him back a little bit, because once he's out there, he's got that dog mentality that he's going to go. Um, so. I'm not surprised that, you know, I'm not surprised when you, when you get around veterans that, that have, that have done it a long time, you know, you try to pick up things as a coach of, as to how, why they're doing it or how they're doing it. And I've been fortunate to be around a lot of guys that have had some years of experience and he falls right into them. Um, just his approach, his leadership, his work ethic, the things he does off the field to take care of his body. Uh, you know, he's not like the, the biggest guy either. So, you know, he's really got to do a good job of, of maintaining his strength and, you know, his bumps and his bruises. And you know, he's just a pro. He's been a privilege to be around and and to learn from uh, as a coach as well. Um, I think he's he's really done a good job of fitting into our room and um, developing a trust relationship with Josh. 
I know that the organization, we know the organization, you know, want, going back a couple of years, wanted to get him in. And, and now you yeah. guys have him. You got him this offseason. What, what did you think he could bring? Even going back then, why was it important to, to get Emmanuel Sanders specifically? Well, he's a good player. Uh, we thought he could help us, um, which he has. He's got position flexibility. He's got quickness. He's got instincts. He's got good hands. He's got a good feel for zone coverage. He can get open versus man coverage. He's been productive for a long time in this league. Um, you know, those are all the things that, you know, he's instinctive. I could go on and on about him. He's a pro. He's just, uh, he's fit right in. I think he's really added a lot to our room. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Hey, Brian, it's John. Um, kind of going off of Sal talking about Emmanuel. Yep. Gabriel's kind of, it appears, taking a back seat and not as involved um, as maybe some thought he would be going into his second season. What have you seen from him? And has his lack of involvement, I guess, been more, I know he's dinged up early, or just kind of the flow of the game? Yeah, I got a ton of confidence in Gabe. Um, he's another young guy that's improved tremendously. He can only play five eligible receivers, John, as you know. So based on how the game's going and, and what we're doing, um, you know, those three older receivers are our starters, and, and he's, a, he's a backup to those guys. He can play any spot. There's, he's done a lot, um, you know, might not be celebrated because it's, you know, not 10 catches or five catches, but he's done a lot. Um, he's done a lot for our offense. I, I expect him to continue and to do that. Um, you know, the numbers and all that stuff, I don't, I'm not, you know, too concerned with that because I know when you put him out there, he's dependable. You can trust him. He's going to do his job. Um, and I have a lot of confidence in him. And then shifting gears, just in general, I know you watch a lot of film in the off season. How much of that is upcoming opponents? Or I guess more specifically, how much did you focus on maybe the couple games against Kansas City a year ago and then maybe some of their other games as you look to look forward to the regular season? Yeah, I think and that that's a good question. Look, there's the off season is is you know it's long but it's short. So the, the first thing you do is you really evaluate you know, your players and, and where you're at with your players and then the system that you have and you spend a lot of time on that. And, you know, not until you really, um, you know, get to the to the schedule and, and see where you're playing guys at, you know, because you could do some team, you know, tons of work on a team you're playing in week 14. Um, you know, we spend a lot of time on, on really all of our opponents and, and you make offseason notes. Um, you know, you're detailed with it and, you, you know, you kind of put them in a the library so that when you get ready to play the team that you're playing against, you can go back and, and use those notes of, of the things that you studied in the off season. Um, so we do that with, with all those teams. Um, so you kind of have a library of whether it's the coordinator or the head coach, whoever it may be, um, you know, just to get a jump start. But there's a lot of work that needs to be done because you know, some of the stuff they may be doing, they might be have changed the first four weeks. So night four games and you're going back and forth and you have a ton of information. Um, you got to try to streamline it the best you can. Yeah, real quickly follow up. I just was curious because sure. you're not going completely cold into Kansas City here. How much normally, I'm not asking specifically because you haven't no, gotten okay. into it, but how much normally does change even in, you know, four games? Um, with a guy like, sorry, with a guy, yeah, yeah, with no, a guy no, like Andy who's been there and stuff. Yeah, no, I know, but I, I'd say, you know, Coach Baggs, he, he's, uh, he's got a lot of defenses. Um, so how he plays one team might not necessarily be how he plays another team. And, and look, you're looking at the teams. It's like a, you know, we played them twice, right? So it's like playing a division, like our, our in division games. So uh, certainly you're going to look at those, those tapes um, and look at matchups and things like that relative to who they have and who you have, but you're going to, you know, you really got to, you know, dig back into what they're doing this year. And look, some teams change a little bit. Some teams, you know, maybe not as much, um, you know, it's kind of a, a game by game, I'd say coordinator by coordinator, head by head coach by head coach um, process. Appreciate it, Dave. You got it, man. Hey, Brian, Mike Catalana. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Good, good. Uh, we've good. talked a lot about how Josh finds his flaws, works on them, motivates them and all that. Okay, last year, you guys lose four games out of what, 19, two of them are to the Chiefs. 
Mm -hmm. you, you know what it does to him. We've heard him talk about it, how he's motivated. While the team's message is always every game's the same, even keel. Is it okay if for a guy like Josh, I'm not saying it means more, but he's finds a way based on what happened last year, two games that you lose, that it it sort of drives him and motivates him coming into a game? Or do you have to keep him in that every game's the same mode? Yeah, we try to be, and you know this, we try to be as consistent as we can, whether we lose, whether we win, whether certain position plays well, whether they don't play as well, whatever it may be, um, you know, we try to be consistent because I've said this many times, it's legal, eat you up and spit you out if you're not consistent. Um, consistent with your approach, consistent with your practices, consistent with your preparation, um, you know, developing a routine during the, during the season that, that really suits you to be the best player that you can be. Um, and that's where our mind's at. Um, you know, it's the, the most important game because it's the next one. And that's the truth. But in terms of, do you, you know, we've seen him fired up for games. I mean, it yeah. can be almost anyone. Is that a conversation this week? I mean, it's, it's a big game. We all know that it's, you know, it's Kansas City. Yeah, it's a Sunday night. Yeah, he's played enough games. You know, he's played, he's been in this league. He's played in our offense. He's played in enough games that, you know, I think the minute you start changing routine or anything like that, look, we, we want to go out there and do the best job we can every game. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's what we're charged with to, to have a good week of preparation, try to come up with a good game plan, go out there and practice and then, you know, play well, but you know, that'd be, you know, Josh has been pretty consistent for us. He's, I'd say he's highly competitive regardless of, of who we're playing, when we're playing. I mean, we could be, you know, playing a game of shooting a paper ball into a trash basket and he's going to be, fired up about it half the time so uh that's just that's him all right thanks you got it hey brian it's jay with the buffalo news how you doing good jay how are you good thank you um you mentioned earlier uh execution uh red zone you know i think it's been a little bit hot and cold for you guys this year without trying to pin you down too much on a strategic question can you kind of in broad terms maybe talk a little bit about whether that's more execution on your end and the team's end, or maybe if uh, defenses are maybe playing you a little bit differently than they have in the past down there right now? No, I always, I'm always going to say it's a, it's a combination of really everything. Um, you know, we had some opportunities that, that we just quite didn't capitalize on um, and give credit to the, to the Texans. And, um, you know, we look, go back and, and watch the drives and, and most of them were on third down um, where we had some chances and, you know, that's, that's the flow of the game. You know, that's the, everything is condensed down there that there's tighter windows. Um, you know, it usually only takes one play down there in the red zone. If you don't execute it to result in a field goal rather than a touchdown. Um, I know we've been down there quite a bit in terms of the number of plays we've had down in the red zone and it's an area that we work on just like third down and, um, you know, first and second down, but, but obviously we, we'd like to have more touchdowns, um, um, yesterday down there and that's something that we'll just we'll keep on grinding away at knowing the opponent that you guys having have coming up I mean obviously it, that's an emphasis every week in practice is there any way that you even put more of an emphasis on it I mean of course you always want to finish drive with touchdowns not yeah. Field goal. yeah I know we try to be consistent with the J regardless of of who we're playing in terms of what we'd like to do and what our goals are and what our standards and expectations are and and those won't change um you know, we have a level of expectation and standard um, that we're going to commit to and, and try to improve on. And, um, you know, that's I think that's how we need to hold ourselves accountable to is, is trying to do everything we can do to reach the standard. And again, you're not always going to reach that. And you got to do a good job of, of continuing to work on it and and rep it and practice it and prep it. And um, that's what we're going to do. Appreciate your time, Brian. Thank you. you got it. Thanks, Jay. Hey, Brian, it's Elena. Hey, man, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. Um, going off Jay's question there, I was just curious, you know, Emmanuel kind of mentioned this yesterday too. You guys scored 40 points yesterday, but there's still, you know, there was opportunities missed for field goals were kicked instead of touchdowns. Does that kind of speak to where this offense is already that, you know, you're, it's a luxury to be able to be like after a game you scored 40 points, you know, there were still missed opportunities out there? Yeah, and I think that that's consistent with, with what we want to do every week in terms of we have a standard, we have an expectation. I think they're clear. Um, we understand you're not going to 
scoring every possession in this league. It's too hard. We understand that you're not going to finish every drive with touchdowns, although that's the goal. And, you know, how can we do the things that we need to do to help us be better really in every area? Um, and I think, you know, give credit to the assistant coaches and the players of, look, there's a level of consistency in terms of how we approach it on a week to week basis, um, regardless of result, which is hard to do in this, in this league. You know, we're, we're judged by results, but you, know, you want to commit to a process and, and, you know, a way we do things during the week. Um, and that's the standard we'll, we'll hold ourselves to. Um, again, I appreciate those guys, you know, always wanting to be better. Um, that applies to the coaches and, and myself and everybody on, on our offensive unit is, you know, let's have that growth mindset. Let's try to dig in and, and look at the things we can do better on, celebrate some of the positive things that we did and acknowledge them and, you know, really focus on some of the things that, that could have been better. Um, regardless of the result, consistency in approach, consistency in expectation, consistency in standard, um, you know, that's how we, we approach it. Appreciate it. You got it. What's up, Dave? You brought Hi, up a Maddie. point how, with- How are you? Uh, I'm good, how are you? Good. You brought up a point uh, with the Kansas City Chiefs defense and just Spagnuolo and how many defenses he has and how he uses them and how he likes to mix them up so many times throughout a game. So when you're playing a team like that, I mean, how do you prepare for a defense like that? And where's your balance in doing what you do best versus Josh Allen in the offense, taking what the defense gives him when you really don't know what Spagnuolo might throw at you every down? Yeah, no, he's, he's one of the best in the business. And, you know, we have to really do a good job of executing fundamentals and techniques and, you know, do our job the best way we can do it. Um, you can prepare as, as much as, you know, you can prepare and you can look at all the different looks. Um, you know, certainly, you know, it's hard to really say what he's going to do or when he's going to do it because he keeps you guessing a lot. And it's going to fall back on, again, without having game plan or anything like that, it, it usually falls back on fundamentals, techniques, uh, communication, um, and playing together well. And, you know, and playing well against their good players, um, which they have a lot of them on defense. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. That's all we have for today. Thank you, Coach. Hey, I, I'd just like to say one other thing. I just... Uh, I appreciate all the condolences and the, the cards that have been sent to me from the community of my grandmother. Uh, it really means a lot to me and me, my family, but there's, you know, I get a ton of mail every day and there's a ton of fans that send those cards out. Um, just great to be part of this community. I want to thank all of you guys, the, the media, the fans um, really means a lot.